Hello, Knowledge Family. I hope everybody is doing well. We got some good updates on the Birmingham 8. Also on this one right here. And we are also going to touch on these six right here regarding Shanquilla Robertson. But we do have some good updates on the Beham 8 and uh, Miss Hen. Okay, so uh, let's give a shout out to everyone. Shout out to the chat. Shout out to the moderators, awesome moderators. Shout out to the new subscribers. I want to thank all of the new subscribers that we have. Thank y'all so much for your support. It's so greatly appreciated. We had some people saying this is the first time that I ran across your channel, and I'm glad we did. And we are also glad to have you all as part of the Knowledge Family. Thank y'all so much for the awesome support. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I can't say it enough. Uh, thank you to the replay game. Thank you to all of the replay game. Y'all are awesome, okay? And like I said, please hit the subscribe button. If you're not a subscriber already, please hit that like button. Hit the like, like, like. Thank you all for being in the comment section, in the chat, in the comment section. Thank y'all. And I try to get back to everyone. If it's kind of disrespectful and iffy, uh, we don't fool with it. And if it's disrespectful, we do delete. Okay? It goes in the trash. I'm sorry. But uh, that's how it goes over here. But thank you to all the new subscribers, old subscribers, all of y'all. It's so greatly appreciated. It really is. Y'all know how to make a person feel so good. But thank you. Sending love to everyone. Everyone, of course. Okay? So, let's get right down to it. And y'all already know what we have to do for the ones in the back. Mm-hmm. This video is under fair use. Copyright disclaimer under section 107 of Copyright Acts in 1976. Allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit educational and personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. Fair use, uh-huh. All rights and credit go directly to its rightful owner. This video is purely for fair use, opinion, and entertainment. Enjoy. Enjoy, family. So y'all get y'all tea, y'all coffee, and all that good stuff, and just get ready for today because we have a lot to say today here. So as y'all see, the crackling hen up here, we're going to start off with her first. But uh, as y'all see, she has a past, okay? And I just want to do some rundowns on her right quick, okay? Uh, let's talk about it. Uh -huh. Because, see, let's talk about the dangerous damage that a person can do when they run in a city with a preschool diploma. Okay, yeah, because that's what it's given. That is given all preschool. Okay, I'm sorry. You can say what you want to say about me. Okay, now let's talk about the preschool diploma behavior because that's what she's displaying. Okay, now have y'all noticed that the hen right here, she act like she basically inherited the city of Dalton. Okay, through a family business or something. She act like she really owns that city and she owns the people in the city. She act like it's a family inheritance. Instead of her being a mayor, she's really thinking that is hers. And like it was passed down through her family. What? I'm telling you that's that signs of a preschool diploma. I'm trying to tell you it's given. She running around with that preschool diploma and she thinking that she is over and running everything. I'm, I'm going to tell you right now. She act like a preschool little kid that got a credit card. That's basically what it is. You know how you give a preschool a credit card and boy, they're going to run it up because they just, they want everything. They need everything. And you be trying to say, well, we don't need that right now or whatever. Not this one right here on the screen, just like a preschooler with a credit card. She's going to try to run up everything and buy everything she can. And it ain't hers. 
Okay, so let's talk about it. So as y'all see, the New York Post had put down here that uh, the hen was arrested in 2016 and for trespassing to vehicles. It is unclear what became of the case, Chicago PD. Yeah, it's most likely unclear what came of the case because she, she the mayor and she's trying to bury all the information. That's what it is. But we did want to know about that trespassing vehicle, okay, that they had on her. Now, this was in 2016. That was the mug shot of the hen, okay, uh -huh. had got out the barnyard that day. So here it go. It says, criminal trespass to vehicles when he or she knowingly and without authorization, like she's not authority, to enter any parts of the operation, any video. A vehicle okay now aircraft watercraft or snowmobile so she didn't have the authority to enter into either this vehicle they say vehicle they don't say anything about an aircraft or anything like that so what she did was basically took somebody vehicle or went in somebody vehicle but what it says here family is what tripping me out is it says the hen for trespassing to vehicles mm -hmm, with the S on it. So that means she running around more than one vehicle and was going in it without authority. Mm -hmm. So basically to me, that just say that she was stealing. Okay. Breaking in cars, probably stealing. Or I can't see her just taking different cars and riding in it. She could have been joy riding in people different cars. But anyway, that's the charge she had in 2016. And they can't see what the outcome of that case was. Okay. So then it says, this means that if someone enters the trunk of a car without the owner's permission, he or she is just as guilty of criminal trespassing to the vehicle as if they was breaking into a house. Okay? So, yes, that means breaking in. When you breaking in something that is against the law, you are trespassing. So, she has a habit of breaking the law and trespassing and deboing her way into something that's not hers. The same way she doing with their city over there. Yes. Mm-hmm. Now, what she also has done, family, is she call herself the super mayor, okay? Lord. Anyway, uh, she's spinning out of control, as y'all see. The rink was built in the fall of 2020 when Henyard allegedly went over the heads of the village board and ordered it to be built on public land. So what the hen did, family, was she ordered a ice skating rink to be built and did not even consult nobody on the board, the village board, the trustees. She just didn't care. She just did it for her, okay? She felt like she didn't need no approval from the city or anything like that or from the board. She was just going to, you know, create this ice skating rink herself and put it in the city. But one thing about it, family, is the community said they only, the community was only had access to this skating rink probably about four or five times. Other than that, it's her personal skating rink. What you say? Yes, it is. Now, check this out, family, okay? Um, Woo-wee. The ice skating rink is supposed to be for everybody, for the community. But only she's allowed to use it. Okay. Now, um, check this out. Tiffany Henyard. Unbearable. Spending out of control. One million on cop overtime. Oh, we're going to talk about that. Thousands for unimproved. Ice rink. And constant parties and travel. So, what she do in this ice skating rink, family, is she throws parties in this here joint, okay? Now, y'all see how it looks on the screen. Now, what it has is she has the bubble. 
set up in the middle of it. Oh, we finna talk about this family. She has the bubble set up in the middle. That's hers, okay? Then you will see little bubbles where you have everything for a private party. A private two people, three people, four people being this one. Two people, three people, four people being hers. and But she has the one that's in the middle of the ice skating rink, okay? So this is what they do on her private parties and things like that. She sets the skating ring up like this, and she throw her own events when she get ready. And she only invite her friends and her family. Allegedly, that's what it got right here. But you see how it got it set up. Now, her table is inside the bubble, inside the skating rink. Everybody else is lined up on the outside, but it's all like a private party event. So she throw all type of parties over here, family. Yes, she do. Lord, she basically built this ice skating rink for herself. But use the city money. Alleged, I mean, that's what they're saying, family. That's what they're saying, okay? Now, the people in the community said the ice skating rink is only open for the crackling hen. It don't even, they don't have access to it. And they said it's only open when she throwing events and parties and all that stuff. And she having a round the way girl rendezvous with men and can on. Allegedly, I'm going to point that out too. Yes, yes, yes. But anyway, this a round the way girl. Yeah, yeah, I know about the round the way girl. Different area code girl. Yeah, uh-huh. Um, allegedly, she one of them kind, okay? But anyway... She works in this township hall. Not only is she the mayor of the city, she also is the township hall supervisor, which are two different companies, okay? Now, word on the street is she ain't only the township hall. Um, she work at the township hall. hall. Word on the curb is she also have her own private cruise ship uh her pertaining men, uh her township and cruise ship. Y'all know what I'm saying about her cruise ship. It's pretty much easy to uh slip around and slip in in the hallways and stuff. Yeah, uh well that's the word around town. I'm sorry. Allegedly they said, you know, she's the township cruise ship. Yes, uh huh. But anyway, this hen think this is her personal ice skating rink. And this is how she have it set up. Look at the candles, family. She got the candles lit up. Like she finna do a private dinner. With who? With who? I tell y'all who I think it is in a minute. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But this is the thing, family. Is that this is her when she was getting it built. She was thinking she was on and popping. She wanted to do, you know, yeah, you know, doing her little commercials and all that, showing everybody. That she's building a skating rink. See? She building a skating rink, okay? Now, before they put the ice down on it, she wanted to skate on it. So, she was skating around. And you notice it's only her, okay? She didn't tell the public, hey, y'all, before they put the ice down, y'all bring some skates and y'all skate with the mayor. Uh-uh. Because, see, the plan was the whole time, it, it, that's what it's given, the skating rink is for her, okay? The ice skating rink is for her and her only and her homies and her goons, okay? That's what it's given. Now, if you see here, they laying the ice down. If she don't look like a sugar booger head on this picture, I'm sorry. It looked like her wig was a pass me down from Goodwill. Look at the face and the hat looked like it was borrowed and all that. Just look a mess right here. But this is the mayor. And you notice she the only one in there beside the construction workers. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Let's go on. So that's when they got it going and ready, and they putting the ice down on the little plays there and all that. But see, my thing is, Tiffany, is that why are you the only one that's on that skating rink? Because it's supposed to be a community, right? Now, I also want y'all to check out, family, those houses in the back. What did I do with my pen? I don't have... Check out the houses in the back, family.
if y'all notice, she done put this ice skating rink slap in the middle of a tight ass neighborhood. Look at the doggone houses that's just right here. Then you got a little house over here. And she done took all their little property up. That's what it's looking like. Look at there. They barely can get out and put a trash bag in the dumpster. They ain't got no room to walk. Do you think she care? Mm -mm. Do you think she asked them? Mm -mm. Do you think it's a city ordinance that it shouldn't be like that? Most likely, yes. But she don't care because remember, she didn't ask for approval to do that. So she got these people. The neighborhood was already tight because you can see this house right here and this house right here. So they the houses are just right across the street from each other. So they really ain't got a lot of road room up in there. That's what it's given. That's what it looked like. But she slapped a ice skating rink slap in the middle of that tight ass neighborhood. Told you that preschool education. That's all it's given. Preschool education, you know. And that's wrong. That's wrong. Look at this right here. If this ain't... Ooh, look at this. Family. Family. Look at that house right there. Look at this house. See, I look at stuff like this. This is too tight. So what are those people supposed to do who live there? Do you think when they bought that property, whatever, they thought that a skating ring was going to be right there where they could barely squeeze down their driveway? That is a tight neighborhood. That's a small neighborhood. And she probably slapped it down, slapped in the ghetto. You know, but she wanted it to be hers. But look how happy she is, smiling and stuff. She ain't even thought about the people in the neighborhood. That's a tight neighborhood. Preschool education, that's what it's given. Now, she's admiring how the skating ring is coming along. Okay, family. Yeah. So she admiring how everything looking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then that's how it looked. Now, look how they did. They put this up there, that fence. Then the privacy fence. And then that's them people house. It looks like the privacy fence is touching the house. Them people don't have too much room to walk. Do you think she cares? No. And she did not get approval to do this. Because if she did, they would have did the diagram a little bit better than that. You cannot close a neighborhood in that's already tight to put what you want to put in there for your little rendezvous. This woman is off the chain. Off the chain. Look at this. And she dancing on it. She dancing on it. She dancing on it. Oh, she was doing a kick, kick move. Now, once again, family, I'm going to show y'all about the preschool diploma. Okay? She done had them put graffiti in the middle of the skating rink. Why is that? Why is that? Never trust a skating ring with graffiti on it. Family, never. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Family, never trust the ice skating rink with graffiti written all in the middle of it and on the outside of it and all that. Uh, red flags. Right off top. Red flags. Don't fall for it, family. Don't fall for it. Look at this. A skating rink with graffiti all in the middle of the ice, round the ice, and this is uh, totally unacceptable. So, now, you don't spend these folk city money, and this is all you could do with it. That's what I'm talking about, about that preschool diploma. That's what I'm talking about right there. I'm telling y'all something for your own good. This is good tea and good knowledge. Don't y'all go to no skating rink that got all this graffiti written all in the middle of it and all that stuff like that. It's a red flag. If you, if y'all ever go to any skating rink or any 
any type of rink. It don't matter. And it got graffiti all in the middle of the floor and all on the outside of the walls. And it's all over the middle of the rink and all that. Y'all better run like hell for the hills. You better run for the hills and don't look back. Because something is bound to break out in about one hour and five seconds. It's going to be a brawl. It's going to be a fight. It's going to be some pow pow flying all over the place. It won't be long for your ass going to be in danger. Five, four, three, two, one. Pop out. Y'all in danger. I'm telling you, don't trust no skating rink with graffiti all over it. That just shows you right there. Her mentality. Ghetto. That's what it is. A backyard hen. Dirty hen. Full of ghetto mentality. That's all she is. Don't y'all fall for it. And look at her dancing on it. She is happy. That's a preschooler for you. She is happy as hell to have this skating rink with all kind of ghetto graffiti on it. And she thinks she done did something real good and very spectacular for the city. What? Mm, mm, mm. I'm trying to tell you, family. I'm telling you, mm-mm, mm-mm, this hen really thinks she did something. She really do. And she really thinks this thing here is appealing and attractive and it's family friendly with all that graffiti written all over the place. Just ghetto. Preschool diploma. It's sad. Running the city off a of preschool diploma. That's what it's giving. She didn't get... Look here, she didn't get no approval to do this thing. She just took the money and going to build an ice skating rink the way she wanted to, slapped it down in the area that she wanted to, which was too tight anyway, and then she throw graffiti all over it. Just an eyesore. That's all it is. Just an eyesore. Look at this. And look at the ice. And she stopped. Look at this pose, family. Look at this dumpster trash Barbie pose. Mm, mm, mm. Mm, mm, mm. See, the residents really should be thankful that this thing here ain't open to the public because it ain't giving nothing but ghetto ratchet vibes, okay? It look ratchet. It look ghetto. It just giving bad vibes. And that's exactly what type of crowd is going to draw. Bad crowd. And you see them people's houses are right there. It will be a menace for real. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Mm -hmm. I tell you what, when she get booted out of that office, out that mayor seat, which, which ain't going to be too long, it, you know. It ain't going to be too much longer before she get booted up out of there. But the city really need to remove that graffiti off of that ice or that rink or whatever it is. They really do need to remove that. Yes, because uh, that's not appealing at all. They need to just redo that whole rink. It wasn't approved to be there anyway. They need to just get rid of that thing, make it into a park. And come up with a better solution. Like, I know they have a little forest area or something where they could tear down the trees and make the rink like that in that area by the property. Make the rink. That way it won't be interfering and infringing on the people in the neighborhood. This right here is totally disrespectful. Y'all seen how close those houses are to that rink. And then, you know, a roller rink usually have loud music and things like that. And see, she do what she want to do. So the loud music could go on 1, 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. Because y'all know they said she's using it for her personal parties and events and can on. So you know that the music is loud 1, 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. And don't you dare as a resident come out and say, hey, Mayor, can you turn that down? Because she going to threaten you. And then go up on your taxes, might try to take your house and all that. Unbelievable. This hen got to go, this old dumpster trash. That's all it is. And the sad part is, who build a beautiful skating rink 
and then destroy the beauty of the rink with hood graffiti written all over the place. I tell you who do it. Dumpster trash Barbies. That's who do it. Yes, with preschool diplomas. That's who do it. Yep. She put that ice rink in that tight ass neighborhood. Them, them people look like they can't even breathe around there. Let's long take out the trash. They bumping all into their gates around there. Because she decided to do something without approval. Boy, we gots to do better. Look at this. She thinks she on and popping. Hey, don't y'all go to no skating rinks. They got this graffiti all over the place. Please don't. Would y'all check this? I, I'm just, I want y'all to look at it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and she got one of her protégés sitting up there looking at it like, yeah, man, this is on right here. This look good. This look good. Hmm? Well, they had must have had music out there because she was stepping and the kicking and the bouncing in the can. Nothing but ghetto. Ratchet. 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 So let's get to her homeboy right here. Yeah. I want y'all to check out the homeboy right here. Now, Tiffany, uh, homeboy, Andrew Holmes, got accusations of the R word. Yes, he do. He got accusations of the home, uh, R word. Now, everything is moving pretty fast pertaining her investigation, and they're doing a lot of different investigations on this lady for real, and it's getting real tight on her. It really is. Now, Word on the street is the heat is hot. And they getting heat from the sheriff department, the FBI in Dalton, and also the FBI in Nevada because that's where the R word incident happened with her assistant. And they said she allegedly covered that up for her homeboy right there, okay? And they also got special heat from other authorities as well, because you got to remember, they have been traveling all over the place, having all kind of rendezvous and vacations and all that together. And most likely some things has happened in other states as well. Okay. So yeah, so they, they putting together a good package for the hen and her goons. Yeah. So let's read about that right there. This is him. That's the one that the lady, Tiffany assistant, said this man here allegedly all word her in Nevada. Okay. And Tiffany was supposed to take care of the matter when they got back to their little town. And then when they got back to the town, Tiffany fired her. Okay. So as y'all will see right here. As y'all see right here, it says, according to reports, okay, the South Harlem authorities have reported that trustee Andrew Holm of Dalton has not been arrested, nor is he in custody. Police Chief Sean Staples did confirm that there was a police report filed on Wednesday that accused Holmes of drugging and, S, you know, a former village of Dalton employee while they were on a work trip to Las Vegas. Now let's talk about that work trip uh, family because uh, they got receipts saying the trustees and stuff are saying that they can't see the receipts uh, for that Vegas trip. And they said they have asked the mayor, what type of business trip did y'all do in Vegas? What did y'all go to Vegas for? What type of business trip was that? And can't nobody answer that? Not the mayor, not a homeboy, Andrew, and not the other five or six people that went with them. Nobody could tell the trustee board or the city what they was doing over there in Los Vegas anyway. Mm-hmm. So that's red flags right there. So if you can't just tell the trustees in the city, hey, we went over there for this type of meeting. They can't do that. 
because most likely they didn't go over there for no business meeting. They went over there to do rendezvous and play around, okay, using the taxpayers' dollars. That's so sad. So anyway, it says, the statement says that she was out to dinner with Mayor Hen, and, and I ain't going to say Mayor no more. I calls her the Hen, okay? The broke down Hen. So anyway, this lady says she went to dinner with the Hen in Holmes when she became unwell, feeling disoriented. She later awoke in Holmes hotel room, according to the reports. The employee returned home, and another individual, who was also on the trip with them, told her that Holmes was bragging about the incident. This individual told the accuser, who went to Hen Yard with the complaint. The Hen reportedly punished, then subsequently fired the accuser in retaliation. Wow. So that's what happened. So that's what uh, the hen did. Okay. The hen, when that happened and people please understand if something like that happens to y'all, men or women, anything that happens to y'all in another state and you're so-called with your business. And even if you're not with your business, if something happens to you in another state, you need to report that incident in that state. Don't get on no plane and let nobody convince you. Okay. We'll handle it when we get back to our state. No, you got to handle that in the state that it happened in. Okay? But see, that lady must have had some trust in the hen and let the hen persuade her into, oh, don't worry about it. When we get back to Dolphin, I'll handle it. Oh, I, I get right on this right here. She 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 was uh playing on that lady top. And then when they got back, she fired the lady. Mm-hmm. And by the dude who said that he knew that something happened like that to that lady. Then the hen fired that man too for opening up his mouth. Wow. Well, anyway, Nevada did pick up the case. And they are looking into it. Um, they putting some heat down. And now they do have the South Harlan police department, sheriff department, and all them into it, and the FBI and everybody else, because, you know, it ha it's state to state, state to state. So, yes, the hen is getting into a whole lot of heat, okay? So, y'all see right here, it says, Andrew Holmes has been accused of that R word, you know, Dothan probably while he was in Las Vegas, tripped with Dalton hen mayor okay and um the complaint regarding that art incident that hen may have attempted to cover up the r case it is reported that andrew holmes bragged about it okay so uh both of them are in a lot of heat right now and then she's also in heat about uh the finances and the money that has been taken from that city's funds and things like that, okay? So, you'll see right here, most recently, the Illinois Attorney General ordered the Hen Charity to stop soliciting money because it has failed to report how it spends funds and who has benefited. WGN Investigations Learn. So, the Hen has a charity, thing going on family and she was telling people hey y'all don't the donate to the charity and things like this um it's for a good cause and this that so when people started dumping money in it they didn't see her doing what she said she was going to do and then when she started being questioned about it she was getting on tv saying i don't know what y'all talking about i never said that was my fund somebody else must have opened that fund family but she literally told the people on tv and we saw it she said it's her she opened it she's in charge of it and she want people to participate and donate to her charity 
But then she's going to say, I don't know nothing about that once the heat got on her. This lady, it, it sounds like a thief. That's all it is. You know, I'm sorry. Allegedly, that's what it's given. That's what it's given. You know? And then it says, uh, just last week, the village was in the spotlight again. After a letter from the bank says agents would be sent to begin repossessing vehicles due to failure to make a massive payment. According to the letter dated February the 14th, 2024, representatives from KS State Bank threatened to take possessions of more than a dozen village vehicles, which includes six police cruisers after the village failed to make a payment of more than $76,000 on the vehicle's loan some nine months ago. So see, they ain't paid these people in nine months. And it's, the bill is up to $76,000, and they said they're going to come seize it, okay? And so now, but I'm going to tell you what she was doing, family, okay? I'm going to tell you all what she was doing. She was going to the trustee board because some of the trustee people said it. They told it, and that's what a lot of this stuff is being investigated. She would go to the trustee board and say, hey, we need $76,000 to pay for the vehicles. So they would pass the bill for them to do that. But she would get to $76,000, $76,000, but won't pay for it. She would do something else with it. That's when they was taking all these lavish trips and eating high-priced dinners and all this stuff right here, okay? Then, I say about a couple of months later, this is what the trustees were saying, allegedly. They were saying a couple of, uh, say about two months later, she'll come back and say, hey, we need $76,000 to pay for these vehicles. And the trustees were like, we just gave that to you about two months ago. Y'all didn't pay that. Then she would say, oh, I had to pay something else with that. So just approve another $76,000 and then I'll pay it then. They will approve that, but she don't pay for for the vehicles or nothing. She would take that money, that $76,000, and spend it for herself or whoever, her homeboys, her goons, and all that stuff. But she wasn't spending it on the vehicles because the bank clearly said, we finna come repossess them. So then after that, the trustees stop voting yes to give her money because she's not doing it right. She's not doing right with the money. They stop approving different things because she don't know how to act. She won't pay it. Okay? So uh, that's what that is. Now, look at this. Now, one day after they reported all this, right, um... They informed the WGN TV that um, he was informed by the bank that the village promised to overnight the payment in the full amount so it could keep the vehicles for now. Really? That's sad. And you see that they made a statement and said it's unnerving. It's like a kid with their first check account. And they don't realize that they have to balance the book. I told y'all they messing with a preschooler diploma. Mm-hmm. Because the man said right there, just like a kid. It's just like a kid with money and don't know how to act. She must ain't ne- she must been broke growing up. I don't know. I mean, look, she must had a hard knock life. She must have never tasted Chinese food or steaks or anything in her life because soon as she got this position she went straight haywire and turned into a thief mm-hmm. that showed what is given but you see he said it's just like a kid that's just spending money and they don't have to balance the books you know and it says they're not paying the bills when they do get approved. See, they're not paying the bills when they do get approved. That's what I was telling y'all about, how she would lie and say, we need y'all to approve this so we can pay this. Then they'll approve it, but she won't take that money and do what she says she's going to do with it. She do something else with it. Something that's 
for her. Wow. Wow. And it said, and then the man said, come on now. We've been dealing with this for two years. When is the FBI going to swoop in and stop this? Because this woman is just destroying the foundation of Dothan. Yes, she is. I'm telling you right now, she acting like that, that city is her own stimulus package. Yes, she acting like that city is a stimulus package for her. She just spinning, 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 spinning. Just a mud waddling backyard Barbie. Yes, it's sad. And it says investigators is told the FBI has spoken with some of the people featured in previous WGN investigation reports. So, yeah, the uh, FBI is on top of it. Yes, they are. They are on top of it. They really are. Um, and right here, y'all will see that it says that the mayor, the hen, um, hold on. That the that the mayor spends the taxpayers' money on first class airline tickets, luxury hotels, high end restaurants. It sent a public record request to Dothan asking for, among other things, copies and additional credit card statements and receipts of any payments sent to Henyard. So they are on her, okay, because she has been buying the first class airline tickets, staying in luxury hotels with her and her homies and her family. They say she even spending money on her family, everything, you know. When they told her that they wanted all the receipts and they want to look into those books and they're going to do a federal audit and they're going to do all that. Now, all of a sudden, no response was received. It don't matter, Hen. You don't have to respond. They're going to bum rush anyway. They being nice by giving you a timeline to respond. That's what they're supposed to do. But once she go past that deadline that she's supposed to respond, they coming in anyway. They coming in anyway. Mm-hmm. And you see right there, they say they went to Vegas and nothing ever came of it. Meaning that they won't tell them why they went to Vegas. We never got anything from them. And what they were going for, Britain said. That's one another trustees. They don't know even why they went over there to Vegas. They went over there to parlay, splurge off the city money. That's what it's giving. That's what is given. Yes. Sad, sad, sad. Now, this man right here was the police chief before she got this lapdog police chief, okay? This chief here wouldn't follow what the hen wanted him to do. She wanted him to basically be corrupt, and he wouldn't stand for it. And then she said his wife was too close to the people on the trustee board. What? What that got to do with his job? But anyway, she fired him because he wouldn't play ball with her, her kind of ball, her illegal ball. He wouldn't play, so therefore, you know, uh, she let him go, and he got a lawsuit on her right now for that, Okay. So she tried to bully him basically to do what she want him to do. He wouldn't stand for it. She fired him. Okay. And uh, he has a lawsuit on her right now. And as y'all see right there, that ex Dalton top cop says the hen fired him because his wife is friendly with political opponents. That means uh, she was with the trustee boys and she was hanging out with those ladies and things like that. And she wasn't feeling it. She was trying to tell him, why is your wife hanging with these people here? Y'all know I don't like them. Y'all know they always trying to question me. Y'all know that they, they, you know, why your wife friendly with people who don't like me? And he trying to tell her, my wife can be friendly with whoever she want to be friendly with. He trying to tell her, I cannot tell my wife who to be friendly with and who not to be friendly with. Come on now. But anyway, y'all see right there, police chief. 
you know, said this week, former Dalton police chief Robert Collins filed a lawsuit against the village claim the mayor wrongfully fired him in October. What? Come on now. Because he wouldn't play ball with her. He had integrity. And he was upholding the law. He wouldn't break the law for her. So what does she do? She fire him and she promotes an officer who's already like next in line, but he has bad stuff trapped behind him too. Show y'all that too in a minute, family. Yes. So anyway, this hen is out of control. This is her disturbing allegations that she already got packed up against her. And I done put my stilettos in it too to push her to come out of that mayor seat even quicker. But this is her stacked allegations among her. She stripping people of their business license because they won't play ball with her. Revoking their business license because they won't play ball with her. She revoking their license and all that. Okay? Um... She got that charity event that people dumping money in, but now she want to act like she's not a part of it. You know, she conducts herself all over the place with bribes, you know, and intimidation. That's and bullying. That's wrong. You know, she take lavish trips with the taxpayers dollars. She make the city pay for her personal ice skating rink. Yeah, because that's basically hers. Because it's only open for her when she having an event and stuff like that. The public said, every time you go, it's closed. Okay, except for when she using it. And then she used the taxpayers' dollars to promote herself. To promote a whole bunch of billboards. They said that she put up about 133 billboards all over the city. And the city is small. But she put them up just to remind people that she is the super mayor and she's not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. Unbelievable. And she's using their tax dollars to take all these trips with her family, with her goons and all that. They also say, allegedly, that she paid tens of hundreds of thousands for a private investigator to clean up her image. What? So she she hired somebody to come and clean up her mess or try to clean up her mess, but so far it's not doing too well because uh, people still have receipts and stuff, and they still have questions on where is her receipts and stuff, okay? So she just have so many different allegations on her and they terrible they criminal they, it is is she don't need to be in that seat family you know and she has put that city in hardship in a debt over seven million dollars worth of debt so far you know and she went into these are a lot of her allegations she went into that trustee board meeting and told the people bees better have my money she played the Rihanna song in the background as she walked in dressed like Wesley Snipes. Talking about bees better have my money because the trustee board kept denying giving her money to pay stuff because she don't never pay the things she says she's going to pay. So they stopped voting yes to pay stuff. So now she gets mad because she can't get her hands on no more money. So then she walks in their meeting dressed up like Wesley Snipes with the Rihanna song playing in the background. Bees better have my money. What? I said, look at your backyard mud waddling hen. You don't be calling me no I know what you're doing. She wouldn't be nothing last with me. Mm -mm, nah, mm -mm. But anyway, family, um, they say she riding around the town like a crime boss. Okay? Like a female gangster. And some citizens say that they hear pow pow on the side of their house, in the front of their yard, and things like that. It's supposed to be intimidation when they don't agree with her. Or if they get on the news and say something about her, then they retaliate. And then they say at nighttime, they hear these warning shot, shots and things like that. What? 
Yes. Mm-hmm. And they said that she also allegedly using the taxpayers' dollars to pay her family a huge amount of money. But then she would try to cover it and say, oh, they my security. Oh, they my helpers. Like they carried my bags or they did this for me or they made some errand runs for me. And then she write them a big check. So she just giving out money to basically herself, her family, and her goons, allegedly. And the city ain't getting none of it. Only thing they got was a skating ring, and they can't even use that. Mm, mm, mm. Now, then some more allegations, family. Some officers are getting paid huge. Some officers are saying that they work in 300 hours every two weeks. No, they're impossible. If so, it's against the labor law. So either way it goes, somebody done broke the law. Mm-hmm. And um, so they getting checks every two weeks with 300 hours on there. So they getting about 15000 every two weeks to work. Come on now. Come on now. They really need to have get her out of their seat. And um, the police chief is her high-priced lap dog, like I said, right? And uh, that's him right there. Mm -hmm, the lacy, okay? Yeah, he do everything she say do. How high to jump, he jump, okay? So it looked like he gonna most likely be running right behind her in that jail cell because he do everything she tells him to do. So this is the man that she got to replace the, the chief who was holding up integrity. So she got this man here who was next in line on the force. He had been on the force for a minute. And the whole time, it looks like that's what is given, that he's been on the force. He has had, the city has had to fork out money being sued because of him. Seems like he don't know how to police the city because he done had a stack of lawsuits on him for doing bad policing. Now, all police officers are not bad, but this one here, is nothing but a backyard can. He do things terribly according to a lot of the lawsuits that was put down on this here man. And he is her right hand man, lap dog. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's very disturbing. Very disturbing. Those lawsuits are disturbing that he had to get some. This one of them right here. That this company here that sued him said that he just came in, bust in their establishment into their business and took their liquor license for no reason. It, they didn't do anything against the law. They didn't sell it. To, didn't sell anything to any underage people or nothing. They said because he don't like them that he just decided he wanted to harass them. And then he came in and took the business license or the uh, liquor license. Okay, so they went to court, and this company did win an award money for that chief that they got right now. That's under the hen. This is the lap dog. Okay, the city had to fork up some money, and uh, he had to fork up some money. Okay, then you'll see right here, this is the case that he did. He did... They call it like an illegal chase. Like once the chase gets so bad, he was supposed to let up. But he demanded that it keep going. Okay. And then it just turned out bad. And then you'll see right here. It says uh, one of the boys that they was chasing lost control of the car, collided with uh, the dumpster and a parked car. And, you know, I know some people say, well, why did the guys run? They should have stopped. But you have to remind you that from what is given, looking at some reports, family, is that this officer, uh, Hans Lapdog, was very dangerous. He had a reputation out there that, man, if he stop you, you basically gone. You know, so the, the guys must have been scared.
because that that police officer allegedly has a very very dark policing history okay so that's probably why they the guys didn't want to stop they was trying to get to an area that maybe where their family was or whatever like that because they just felt it wouldn't turn out good because of some of the rumors and some of the things that has happened in the past regarding this particular police officer okay so then you see this is allegedly now and then it says right here another passenger dunlap suffered the oh man traumatic uh injury y'all know what i'm talking about and other life altering injuries okay on behalf of the family and attorneys uh levy sued the village of dalton and they got a pretty good amount and you see it says involved in the chase for wrongful deletion and negligence among the misconduct claims so they they claimed that it was very misconduct on um, the police officer's side, which that Lacey was involved in or whatever, 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 whatever. Yeah, yeah, I, I, however you want to say it, you know, um, it's bad. So they was awarded, as you will see here, $33.5 million was awarded to two families in connection to the, you know, deletion in 2016 of that police chase they had, okay? One man passed away, and that was, um, that was this one. They say this one passed away. This one here has lifetime worth of damages, okay? So, um very sad very sad um so this is the one who has a very very dark policing history allegedly you know what i'm saying and uh that's just that's just what she do that's just what she do so she let the first chief go to get this man here because she automatically know okay he does have a history. She was already on the force. So when she fired the other one, you know, because he wouldn't follow her rules, then she said, I get put, promote him because I already know how he rolled. So, yeah, and he'll be the perfect one to be my lap dog. And that's what she did. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then you got this right here. So she got a lot. It seems like everybody that she hired has bad history. Okay. Bad past. Okay. And so even including her, because y'all seen at the beginning, I showed y'all where she got a mug shot herself. Okay. And right here, you'll see, this is the one that she covered up that R word case, allegedly. Okay. Um, and... Let's go into that, okay? Because I read to y'all what, yeah, I read to y'all what uh, they did right there. But that's so you, you just see how she got all these different ones surrounded around her. This is the Levy Redman, okay? She hired this man. He's on the Dothan. Dalton or whatever you want to call it. I say Dothan. I don't care what y'all say about me, okay? I'm going to call it like I want to call it, okay? But anyway, she um hired him to inspect the housing homes. But this man has a history of being a tricycle chaser. Y'all know what I'm talking about. P P do okay? But I call it tricycle chaser, okay? Now, Yes, he is. He's a tricycle chaser. Now, she hired this dude, Lavy Redman, on her city team, who did 20 years in jail for messing with minors. And Tiffany have this man all around the citizens, all around the citizens' kids. He has ex access to get in and out of people's home when he's doing maintenance or inspecting their home and things like that. What? What? So y'all see right there. 
Y'all see right here, and look at that picture. We're going to talk about that in a minute. But y'all see right here, it says, Darth Mayer, under fire for hiring, registered, you know what, a man who chased tricycles, okay? Controversy surrounds it on why she even hired this man. Why? And the trustees and everybody said she didn't even get approval to hire this man. Just like she didn't get approval to put that skating rink or build that skating rink down there. She just do anything how she want to. She act like I told y'all, she act like that's her city personally. She act like she inherit that. Like that's her family business. And it's not. But anyway, the people are outraged that he's, you know, working there. And from my understanding... He's still working there until, like, the FBI and everybody step in. But um, it says that he was hired by her. Freeman's statement contradicts Redman's claim that the hen knew about his past. Now, Freeman, we're going to get to him because that's another lap dog. That's the lap dog. Freeman is a lap dog who is on the committee who handles the account statements and the booking and things like that. He's supposed to be keeping the city bank account statements and all that in order. So when people ask for it, he can up it and show it to him. But because he is also her lap dog, he don't show, he don't show nobody anything. You know why? Cause he know what she doing. He know what she's spending. So now they got it to where can't nobody see anything. And according to, reports this freeman he is the like the accounting man of the city he also has a city credit card and say he's spinning off the chain as well because he is her homeboy and remind you family she is so slick they said that she don't have a credit card she uses their credit cards that they have for the city the employees on the trustees, you know, they had little credit cards for the city so they could buy things and stuff like that. She makes them get her stuff. She makes them charge their card so it never rolls back on her. So when the heat falls down, they get thrown up under the bus, not her, because it's their cards they're using. They said she won't even touch a credit card. She don't even have a credit card in her name. See how slick this hen is? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Wow. Wow. But anyway, this is her homeboy. So the media caught her homeboy and they said, hey, did you know that the hen hired a tricycle tracer? And he going to say she didn't know nothing about it. Well, old boy, who is the tricycle tr chaser, he says, yes, she did. She know all about my history. I told her. She didn't mind. So, see, Tiffany is trying to put it as if she didn't know the man chase tricycles. But the man said, yes, she did. And I did 20 years for it. She knew that. Wow. So, you see here. It says that he has access to homes. He inspects homes over there in that little community. Okay? And it says that the trustees in Dalton say they are stunned and appalled by the latest hire made by the hen, which the trustees says was done without their consent. Like always. Like always. Okay? So then you'll see right here on September the 20th, village records show that the hen hired 46-year-old Lavelle Redman as a code enforcement officer, a job in which he goes into people's homes and businesses to inspect them and make sure they are up to code. Now I can guarantee you if he spent 20 years in the pen, in the pokey down now. It's no way that he got any experience in inspecting buildings. Mm-mm. 
Where his degree at, Tiffany? Where is his degree at, yo trifling hen? She lying. She did that because she most liked the man. She like him. I believe he clapping them cheeks. Yes, I do. I think he clapping them cheeks. I think he is because I looked at a picture and I'm going to show y'all in a minute. But anyway, uh, they said, the, the people said, the problem is Redmond is a registered tricycle chaser. He is on the Illinois State Police Child thing. Okay. He is on the registry. Okay. She just hide. Okay. So y'all will see right there. It says, this is what he did. He did. He spent 24 years in prison in Illinois after pleading guilty to taking part in a, a attack gang R word. Meaning they, him and a bunch of more guys gang force hanky panky on some females okay uh in the roseland neighborhood in 1991 he and three other people uh took yeah i know what i'm talking about grabbed them and then they did the force thing to two girls age 13 and 14 now trustees in dalton are demanding that the mayor explain how and why she hired him into a job that puts him in constant contact with the public and the kids and all that stuff. Why? Why? Now, look at this picture here. That picture looks mighty closing. That looks more than just um my building inspector picture. Okay? Look at how the hands is all, his hands is down here by her butt. Yes, it is. Can y'all see it, family? His hands is down there around her butt, right up under her elbow here. That is more than, or you are just my building inspector. He inspecting more than those buildings. He is inspecting the hen as well. Yes. Look at that picture. That picture looked like a club picture. Y'all know when you go to the club, you take those pictures, a couple, you can take a picture for $10 in the juke joint or in the club. That's what that looked like right there. They done took a juke joint picture. That's what that is. Don't tell me that that was just a picture that they took for business. That's too close. That's too close. Mm -mm. That's more. Now, his past is disturbing, okay? And for her to hire him is disturbing. So that just tells you what type of person she is. She don't care. And she has, they say, a young child, a young daughter herself, allegedly. And this picture here looks like they kicking they kicking the bobo. Look like they are doing some pillow talking. That's what, I, that's what the picture is giving. You're not supposed to take no pictures with your employees like this. Not a mayor. That looked like a club picture. One of them $10 club pictures. One of them cheap pictures too. Yeah. Now, he around here chasing tricycles. Instead of chasing women driving cars. Look at the company that this hen keep. And look at the company that she keep entertaining. That says a lot within itself. You see the Andrew man. She went on to the Vegas trip. A whole bunch of them. A whole group of them. He about went to. All them went. And the Andrew man did the R word allegedly to a woman. To her assistant. Then you look at the chief. He has a disturbing background. Then you look at this man here. Redmond. Has a disturbing background. You look at her. Her background stinks. And. She's doing disturbing. Alarming. Dangerous behavior. Right now. So it's like they whole click is full of toxicity and dangerous at the same time. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. 
this here low budget round the way girl they do it look like this is a round the way girl that i'm sorry that's what it's giving you get mad at me you look like a round the way girl. and who put her on that annie dress i wants to know see they said she taking all this money but the girl can't shop her wigs be tangled up looking like she done got it from goodwill somewhere or the Salvation Army. It looked like it's been passed down from her grandma. Them wigs she be having on. Then she got a dress on that looked like little Annie. Please tell me tomorrow, tomorrow, I love you tomorrow. Tell me why do this girl got on Annie? I can't wait till they get her up out this seat. Anyway, uh... She got a stack of lawsuits on her. That is just totally disrespectful. Look at this family. Now, y'all gonna tell me that don't look like a $10 club picture down there in the, uh, in the hole in the wall juke joint that they done got together, had a couple of drinks and took the picture together. Yes, yes, yes. That's exactly what it looked like. But I can tell you right now, uh, the FBI is on top of you, uh, hen yard, and I'm sticking my stilettos in there. Yes, yes, yes. All y'all are demons, villains. All y'all look click there. I ain't seen nothing positive come out of none of these stories pertaining her and her goons. Not at all. Not at all. She has a stack of lawsuits against her for discrimination, violation, uh, taking money, infringing on civil rights. She tried to do us like that. Threatening people, all of that. Just a village full of demons that's running it. That's all. The FBI is investigating Tiffany Hard, though. I can tell y'all that. Mm -hmm. I ain't going to say too much, but they investigating the hard. It won't be long. Countdown has begun. Yes. Yes. And we will be pushing to speed it up as well. Uh-huh. And I know the citizens over there are too. Mm-hmm. Yep. 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 Your days are just about over, sister. Just about over. Look at this. And that's when she went in there dressed like Nino Brown, deboing them people. And then put on that Rihanna song, Bees Better Have My Money, because they wouldn't pass or order to give her money. Mm -hmm. She thinks she's slick. She thinks she's slick. So this is how they treat their citizens. This right here. Is the bootleg gang right here. The bootleg crime bosses right here. Her and her flunkies. Yeah. All of them stale corn chips. Running the city like mobsters. While all these people down here are the taxpayers. And they hurting very, very deeply. That town is suffering. Very bad. Yes, very bad. So, that's all I had to say about her. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, and that Freeman, this guy right here, that, that I forgot about him. This one right here is the one who was the accountants over the board, right? He's the accountants. And that's the one who won't give up the... Receipts and stuff of what all been happening with the city. But that's his home, girl. So he ain't going to do that. But anyway, he been lying to the IRS. Not the IRS, but to the bankruptcy people, okay? Uh, you will see that they have also started a petition over there in Dalton to remove him, okay? As residents of Dalton and Thornton Township, we must demand he be removed as the resident and taxpayer, okay? Because he won't give up those receipts. And basically, he ain't giving them up because he know they incriminating. It's going to incriminate him. It's going to incriminate her, the hen. It's going to incriminate uh, that ones that she hired. It's going to incriminate a lot of people. Most likely that Andrew, everybody. That's in her clique. Mm -hmm. 
and himself. Yeah. Uh huh. Because he's already in a bunch of hot water now. Um, yeah, so they asked him for him to be removed, family. Uh, if you'll see right here, it says, Keith Freeman forgot he's Dothan Village Manager. Now, what he did, family, is he applied for bankruptcy. Okay, because he know that most likely the hen finna go under and he's not going to be able to pay for a lot of things that he's been able to pay for. So he done filed for bankruptcy. So he done got him a leg up first because he already know that his little uh dirty hen is about to go down. Okay, so now he's shaking in his boots because he see the heat is hard. So he did file for bankruptcy. Okay, like, hey, that way he most likely will be able to keep whatever he got. But he told the bankruptcy court what he does, family, this man right here, her little uh, flunky. Freeman, that's the one who works on trustee board. He also works in the township hall um, job too with Tiffany. Tiffany works in the town hall as well, and she is the mayor. So she has two jobs. This man works in the township hall with her as well. Okay. And he works on the trustee board as well. So those are two different jobs. They not related to each other at all. Okay. He got two jobs. She got two jobs. Okay. Well, he filed for bankruptcy and only reported the township job, not the trustee job. He was trying to get over, but somebody caught it and they brought it to the attention of the bankruptcy court. Okay, so now he's even in more hot water. Most likely the hen told him to do it. Now he in more hot water. Okay, see, they think they all slick. Okay, and so you see it says Keith Freeman forgets he's Dothan's village manager. At least according to the bankruptcy filing. So that's what he did. He told the bankruptcy court about his job as the township employee but he didn't write on there that he's also the trustee manager for the dalton village mm -hmm. so he left that out and somebody told it so see according to him he only makes five thousand dollars see from the one and only job is listed as five thousand eight hundred and thirty three dollars and thirty six cents that's what he told the bankruptcy court okay that he only had one job and he said that he do get other monthly income as reimbursement like i do odd jobs and i do little odd stuff and i get about two thousand dollars doing odd jobs okay so that will put him about at seven thousand one hundred and sixty seven thousand dollars a month right but he did not report the fact that he is a trustee board manager a whole nother job that pays him a whole nother salary and he makes good money for that as well because the hen made sure of that okay so he didn't report that though family he just put he has that one job and he get little he get about two twenty three hundred 2300 for little odd jobs. We'll just put him at $7,000 a month. Well, somebody bust him out and told the bankruptcy people that he has that job at the village. What would make both jobs really be $15,000 a month is what he makes. Uh-huh. So now he's in deeper trouble for lying to bankruptcy. I'm telling you, just criminal stank stank all around this joint, okay? All of them. All of them just wallowing in a bunch of mud and doo-doo. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, he's now in a bunch of trouble for that. Yes, he is. And uh, you'll see here on February the 6th, the people asked Freeman and his bankruptcy lawyer to review what they caught and tell them if it's inaccurate. And they have yet to respond. And he know. Now he's shaking in his boots because he done lied to the bankruptcy court. Mm-hmm. So he got some more stuff on his hands. Yes. Mm-hmm. Wow. And 
Tiffany done bought a $150,000 tie hole on the city's money. I'm telling you, she is off the chain. Off the chain. And he helping her along because he deals with the finance. And he ain't showing nobody nothing. Now he in trouble with bankruptcy as well. Okay? So, um... You got vendors asking for their money and all that. Totally, totally off the chain. Totally off the chain. Wow. Wow. So anyway, I want to uh, throw a salute out to uh, this lady. Right. Oh, but I do want to say this right here on uh, Tiffany... Tiffany Henyard thing. I do want to say this right here. Look at these. Look at this right here. This ain't an eyesore. But I do want to say, because the first thing that this hen always come out her mouth. I'm the first black female mayor in Dalton. You all should know I'm the first black female here. Well, you also going to be the first black female that's going to be sitting in there First black female mayor sitting in that prison eating on them hard grits in the pokey because it's coming real soon. Yes, it is. Child time is just about coming to your ass, okay? What a yellow jumpsuit on, okay? So, and you done got used to spending all these folks' money, but I can tell you right now, ain't no sense of thinking nobody going to put no money on your books, okay? Because everybody that you're running around with gives me food stamp vibes, okay? Because y'all taking these folks' money, ain't even trying to spend your own money. You ain't going to get no type of money on your books. And I can tell you right now, you can't put food stamps on your books, so you just good as doomed, okay? But what I can say, is that you going to be the first black male down there in that yellow jumpsuit eating on that child food. Mm-hmm. And you going to be shopping for your orange jumpsuits in that book room, booking room. Yes, yes, you ain't going shopping no more. The only shopping you going to do is going right down there to the booking room and pick you out a jumpsuit. That's all you getting. That's all I got to say about her family. I do want to get on to uh this this lady here, Dora Ladner. Okay? Uh Ladner. She was a civil rights, um, you know, very, very into civil rights leader, activist, and um, she passed away, and I just want to give her, you know, her flowers. She passed away on the 11th of this month, but very, this is her right here, so I just want to give that shout out to that sister and, and this is her, because she passed away the 11th of this month. She fought for equal rights uh, for everyone, you know, endured a lot of intimidation, tear gas, all that stuff, dog threats. She endured the men and the sheets, you know, she did all that. And she passed away March 11th, 2024 in Washington. She was 81 years old. And it was reported that she passed of respiratory failure. Um, she joined the youth chapter of the NAACP in Hattiesburg, Mississippi in 1959. She was a principal organizer of the civil rights movement. And she joined and led the marches that was set back in those days, and she helped organize the 1963 March on Washington. So we just want to say rest in peace. She did a lot for racial equality. So rest in peace, sister. And we would like to thank her for the hard, hard work they put in to get us all to where we are today. Uh, these right here, savages. Lord, how mercy yeah let's let's just go ahead on with them right here um the Birmingham eight okay now the Birmingham eight it was two of these criminals that waived a preliminary hearing this past week here and that's understandable because they might as well waive it because they was gonna be 
thrown to the grand jury anyway, so it wasn't no sense of them putting on their regular flip-flops from that jailhouse. Just sit there and wait on the uh, grand jury to tell you when to come to court because uh, they, they, ain't, they ain't getting out of there. But anyway, um, let me show y'all this right here too because they had these two right here was supposed to go to court this week. Because, see, the other six went. And then these two, because they got the hardest crime, was supposed to appear this week. But they waived their rights. They say, nah, that's all right. We ain't even trying to waste our time. I know their lawyer told them. that old court-appointed lawyer, whatever they got, probably told them. Ain't no sense of y'all sliding on them ragged-ass jailhouse rock flip-flops. Just go ahead on and sit here and just wave your right. Just go ahead on to the grand jury. Because that's all he going to do anyway is send y'all to the grand jury. You ain't going to get out of the grand jury. So just go ahead. So that's what that is. So Mahogany case was moving fast at first, family. Yes, it was. It was moving fast. And her family went into the courtroom. Uh, that was a family member. That's her her mother. Okay. Uh, her mother has been going to every... um court appearance which is so good her family her family been stacked up in there every time Birmingham 8 has been to court about two or three times now and every time they have came to court her family was 10 toes down in those courtrooms so I have to give them uh you know they props for that as well but that's Mahogany's mother right there hugging someone on the way out the courtroom that's more family members of hers that was at the courts that's mahogany's mother right there so they did uh they always in that courtroom no doubt they always in that courtroom so let me just um show y'all this right here too because a lot of people was wondering about those charges being dropped and I can tell y'all right now, right, we talked about it before. It's no sense of worry about that. Alabama just basically throw them in a ditch full of Gorilla Glue and quicksand when they did that. You know, people in Alabama know exactly what that means. It means they doomed, basically, okay? So, um, Mahogany case was moving fast at first, and that's because Alabama wanted uh, to get these eight for that horrific crime that they did against mahogany uh and the case was moving real fast well now that everything's been moved to the grand jury it'll probably be about three months i give it about three four months before we see them in the courts again uh so they got a minute because the grand jury the police and the detectives got to get all their evidence together for them now this case will slow down for a couple of months because they are still processing a lot of evidence and a lot of evidence that the public don't even know you know um i'm telling y'all y'all see they have a lot of evidence that the pol the police and detectives and stuff they have a lot of evidence that the public don't even know about they got a lot of evidence that the eight don't even think they have. Okay? But they do. Okay? And I'm going to tell you, when that grand jury come, most likely it's going to be some charges picked back up. Oh, yeah. Yeah. For a fact. You know? And um, this one right here is has a bond, but nobody has bailed her out yet. So, um... The, her friends, they friends probably ain't got no money either. Uh, family don't want to get her out because it's only six hundred. It, her bond was six thousand, and you gotta have six hundred and something to get her out. That's just how Alabama is, you know. You get the ten percent, uh, and she's still sitting in there. So either don't nobody want to spend that money on her, or the people that she uh be around on the outside is broke and can't come up with it because i'm gonna tell you they all was eating vienna sausages before they got in there for breakfast lunch and dinner that's all they ate 
all the time. Vienna sausages, hot sauce, and chips. Yeah, so they didn't have much. And then they were saying some of them were bathing with the Ajax li liquid detergent. So you know they was broke before they went in there. And now they ain't getting no money on no books, most likely. None of that. None of that. They was already doing bad. Already doing bad. And they doing horrible now. Mm-hmm. So, people are wondering why did that judge drop that, you know, a couple of cases. But I'm going to tell y'all right now, watch Alabama smoke. Because they are handling this case to the fullest extent of the law. You can guarantee that. And they putting these eight under every criminal process Alabama have. And that's why at first they went to court for the bond hearing. Then they couldn't get no bond. Then they come back for a preliminary hearing. Then, after that, they got to go to a grand jury. See, they putting them through the heat. They putting them through the proper channels of the heat. And that grand jury ain't nothing to play with. And the residents of Alabama who know the Alabama law, they uh, When they said grand jury, they automatically knew they was doomed. Because, see, I spend the majority of my time in Alabama, so I already know. When I heard grand jury, and then when I heard that the judge dropped some of the charges, and most of them was dropped because you have to understand, the police didn't have all of their evidence. They still don't have it all together yet. So... What they did have, they charged them with it. And then they dropped the other ones. But when they get to that grand jury, you best to know the police and detectives going to have a stack of evidence. They going to have it stacked, ready, and in order, looking so sweet. And they going to have videos and everything else. And it's going to be ball game. Most of those charges will be picked back up, most likely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I'm going to show y'all what I'm talking about in a minute in an article that was uh, made, you know. And we automatically knew, you know, uh, when we heard grand jury that it automatically, that they automatically got through in Gorilla Glue mixed with quicksand. All eight of their asses. Y'all can believe that. Believe that. Because I know the Alabama law. You know, and like I say, I have four different states that I spend a lot of my time in. But Alabama, I know that law, they doomed. They doomed. And, the, you know, like I said, the police department have so much more evidence, so much more evidence that they are still putting together that the public don't even know about. And they're not going to tell the public about it until the grand jury come. Mm-hmm. And once Alabama and those Birmingham police officers and detectives present their evidence to that grand jury, it's over with. It's over with. And like I said, I'm not an expert, but I do know the Alabama law. It's over with. It's over with. And let me show y'all this right here. This is what they tried to say in their um, preliminary hearing. They tried to say that mahogany made one of the guys Harris strip because she thought he had her weapon. Stop the cap. Stop the cap. You know, now they're trying to come up with lies to probably save their butt, but it's not going to work. I can tell them right now. But they say that mahogany made uh Harris uh strip to to prove he didn't have her weapon and then uh Pope told Harris to do something to her because she made him uh strip then detective said Jackson was you know attacked multiple times throughout the time she was being held you know against the will later in the day before Jackson passed she was put in Harris' car, and he and Pope and McDonald took her, McDowell, took her to clean Harris' car out. Even though the defense claimed Harris said they was taking her back 
to her house. They telling all kind of lies, family. I don't even want to read no more of that. Y'all can read it. Uh, they telling all kind of lies, okay? First of all, that girl ain't make nobody strip, you know? And I'm like this, okay? Let's go ahead on and go with a trifling savage scenario, okay? Uh, that she made him strip. Okay. So he must have put back on his clothes, right? So why he couldn't say, now you strip. And then make her put back on her clothes, and that was the end of it. See, that's when you know that somebody is telling a tale. Because I'm going to tell you like this. These right here so-called gangsters, she did not make them strip. Nah, they gangsters, remember? Come on, now. And then I'm going to get to that car part in a minute because that ain't nothing but a fresh lie. That ain't nothing but a fresh lie. Talking about uh, they cleaned out their car. What? Now, they said she made, Har Harris said she made him strip. We supposed to really believe that. We supposed to really believe that. Stop the cap. Stop the cap. You know, because these guys been seen on their social medias before. Splurging with pow power weapons. Acting like they tough. Acting like they bad. But now all of a sudden, you turned into a wimp. And she made you strip to see that you have a pow power weapon. Come on now. I'm going to tell you, that right there ain't going to do nothing but put him in quicksand more. Because everybody in that courtroom know he lying. Point blank period. This is a lie alibi to try to save asses. That's all it is. These four right here, you mean to tell me she made y'all? Come on now. Stop it. Stop it. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. And some people in the comment section was telling me about Tasia. Remember in this... In one of the other videos, I said she was limping in the courtroom as if something was wrong with her. Okay? And she was limping. Boy, she, I don't know. And I was telling y'all, I said, I don't know if the uh, cuffs was too tight or what, but she was limping her butt off. Just limping. Just limping. And then nobody cared nothing about her limping. Well, I guess it was some of her folks that come in my chat. Not in my chat, in my comic section. And they said, she was in a bad car accident. That's the reason why she limps like that. She hopping because she was in a car accident a while back. Let me tell y'all something. We gives a rat's ass what she was in, okay? We really don't because let me tell y'all something. When she was jumping on mahogany, she didn't have not one limp. When she was dragging mahogany, she didn't have one hop. When she was wailing on mahogany, she did not sway side to side with a broke limp, broke back, broke hip, none of that. Oh, she was on and popping. Nothing was hurting on her. So don't y'all try to cry talking about she was in a bad car accident. What y'all trying to do? Try to get her disability? It ain't going to work. We saw how she moved. You can't lie. The camera don't lie. Okay? She didn't do not one limp. One hop, nothing, when she was dragging and ragging mahogany. So, I care it's nothing about. So, don't come in my comment section no more talking about. I had about five of them comments. Must have been some of her folks. She she limped like that. Why you talking about her limp? She limped like that, and she hopping like that in the courtroom because she was in a bad car accident. We don't care nothing about that bad car accident. I can't tell she was in a bad car accident when I was looking at her on that video wailing on mahogany. So you need to fall back. All five of you who was in my comment talking that mess. I don't care nothing about this little Monchichi. No, I don't. I don't care nothing about Monchichi. I don't care nothing about this rag doll. Leg, her back, her hip, none of that. Because none of that was hurting when she was ragging and dragging mahogany. Don't come telling me nothing about this old 
pig little pig feet looking mon chi chi. We cares nothing about this rag doll. Not over here at the cafe. Run her bumper in the ditch. That's what I'm going to do. Uh, boom, it's gone. We cares nothing about mon chi chi or her limp. No, we don't. Anyway, here it go, family. It says right here. Uh, the stolen gun and money. Now they're going to say that the stolen gun and money. But I want to show y'all this right here. Harrison Pope, after they done did all this unthinkable to mahogany, they call their self going to clean out their car after they did this young lady like that. Are you serious right now? See, that's what I'm telling you. The grand jury ain't going to be nothing to play with. Because you see right here, it says, Later in the day before Jackson passed, she was put in Harris' car. Now, you remember, she was all beat up, broke up, bleeding, everything. But anyway, she, uh, Harris Pope McDowell, took her to clean Harris' car out. Even though the defense claimed Harris said, they were taking her back to her house. So after they did all that to this young lady, they decided why she was probably hanging on to a string of life to go stop and clean out their car. See, they're putting their self in more quicksand, more Gorilla Glue. And they're going to boil it on their ass in that courtroom. Because they sat right up there first. And we see the tape of her getting terribly, terribly done up. All kind of unthinkable actions they did to this woman. And after those actions, they say they put her in the car. But we went to go clean out our car. What? That shows just how more savage and demonic y'all are. That she's barely hanging on inside that trunk, most likely. They ain't put her in no back seat. Because they put her in the trunk the first time when they took her from Pope House to Tasia House. They put her in the trunk then and drove her over there. So they most likely put her in the trunk at the end when they talk about they took her to go clean out their car. Mm -hmm. Took her to clean out Harris' car. Out. Then you hear it say, that's when Harris is accused of pulling the pow pow and deleting mahogany. So a lot of people thought it was Jeremiah that uh, deleted mahogany. But now... Um, Jeremiah and the other guy is saying, no, Harris did it. Okay? So, um, they are saying he did it. And let me, uh, show y'all. Okay? So, you got Pope right here and McDowell. They said Harris pop out mahogany not jeremiah so these two are coming together they are they are in there talking just like i said family remember i said that about what a week and a half ago i said they in there talking and in the other video i said who y'all think is um uh, you know talking and want less deals and things like that well it looks like they all doing it family because they're saying francis deleted mahogany and he does have a past record remember i showed y'all in the other video he has a history of uh pow pow in an occupied building or school bus slash house and all that okay so um yeah so you will see it says when we have a lot of video is ready it's ready give a clear picture to what exactly the charges are what exactly the charges should be. This is the detective talking. Who should be held accountable for this case? This case is particularly very brutal, being that a young lady was taken, you know, she was done up. 
what you've done wrong. I can't say a lot of those words. Um, you know, so they just hope that they get justice, which they will. We're not worried about that, okay? But you'll see that they have uh, five videos were turned in over by witnesses, the detective said. And one video showed part of the uh, attack at Pope's apartment. They got a lot of videos, and they say in all family, they have about eight to ten videos that's very incriminating. Some videos that they didn't think that would uh, be able to be gotten, but they say that they have it. Uh, they also say they got some videos out of the suspect's phones, okay? Um, let me see, because I wanted to show y'all that. The Texas said three more videos have been obtained through some of the defendant's phones within the last 24 hours. However, there wasn't enough time to thoroughly investigate the new videos before the preliminary hearing. Okay, so remember I told y'all that, that, that and, and that's why most likely the judge drop some of it because they didn't have everything there like they wanted to, but they know that they, so that's why the judge said these charges could come back. Most likely they will, but they have a lot of stuff on these here eight. Okay. Most definitely they have a lot on these, these eight. Okay. Um, and I just wanted to show y'all this right here because they had no remorse. They said in that courtroom, they didn't have a bit of remorse at all. They didn't care. Uh, it was almost like when they was hearing some of the things that they had did, it was like they was proud that they had did it. You know? And that's sad. That is so sad. So uh, they didn't have any type of remorse, that, remorse at all. But you can see right here. This one here is in a sunken place, and she is talking. I know she's talking like a hummingbird right about now. Yes, yeah, she's talking and singing like a hummingbird. Yes, yeah, she is. I can guarantee you that. She look like I'm done. I'm done. So most likely, yes. Most likely. So, so far, we do know that they have gotten a lot of the video evidence out of their phone plus witnesses been sending them phones i'm gonna tell y'all right now it's gonna be very very quiet concerning uh mahogany case you know when you you know how witnesses or people want to talk about that i'm talking about people in birmingham alabama you know uh, they not going to be too much on social media like they was running their mouth. And I'll tell you why I say that. Because right now, Alabama is buckling down on this case right here. They really are. They kind of want to keep it hush-hush among witnesses, I'm saying. You know, people can report on I ain't talking about that. I'm, I'm just trying to get y'all about what I've been hearing on the curve of the streets of Alabama. You know, it's like they putting gag orders on witnesses and people who know things they tell them to stop talking they knocking on their doors telling them that hey hey if you don't want to be dragged in this you need to be quiet you know um they will give protection to whoever needs protect you know protection when it comes to this case uh because they they're gonna want their witnesses to come forth and if it takes them being protected they're gonna do that you know because they gonna make an example out of these eight right here you might as well get ready. Might as well get ready. Now, on this, let me shoot quick on Shanquilla Robinson because um, it's been almost two years. Almost two years. And she hasn't gotten justice yet. You know, her case has been tainted. Uh, this is Shanquilla right here. Her case has been tainted, used, and abused, and lies and cover-ups and disrespectful things just circling all around her you know um it's her case has damn near been swallowed in mud yes from so much corruption from so much 
and Khalil and Elise. This is Khalil and Elise. They knew from the beginning that Shanquilla family didn't have a chance against their family. They got powerful families in North Carolina, okay? And we already know about we expose the conflict of interest he got going on, okay? So these two had already knew that Shanquilla family didn't have a chance against them or their protectors. That's what it's given. And that's what we have seen so far, because it's almost two years. It's obvious what stopped Shankula's justice. Khalil, Elise, and their protectors. That's what stopped and put a halt and buried Shankula's justice. Thus far, thus far. You know what I'm saying? And Khalil knew that. He knew that. He knew that from the very beginning. Because Cabo Six and their protectors are used to getting away with things, you could tell. They would do dangerous things and get away with it. They'll delete people and get away with it. Look at Shanquilla. They got away with Shanquilla. Because we all know this big conflict of interest that we exposed that the DOJ that made the decision, no criminal charges for the Cabo Six not to go to jail. She was one of the DOJs who made the decision, no criminal charges, so Cabo Six can basically go free. But then we find out, Cafe of Knowledge exposed, that she is closely related to these four people. This is a like brother or first cousin right here. But she is closely related to these people right here. And Khalil is closely related to these people right here. That's a conflict of interest. But she ruled on the Cabo Six case and said no criminal charges, which let them go free. And her justice never happens. Never happens. Never happens. Why is that? Why is that unbelievable? And right today, her representative that's supposed to be working her case and her family has not said a word, which brings me back to mostly everybody don't want to mess with these families right here. Mm -mm. They don't want to mess with them. They don't want to mess with these two powerful families. One of DOJ's is related to his family members. And she has powerful family members as well over there in North Carolina. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. They are sabotage with corruption and everything else. And that and that's sad. They will sabotage somebody's justice just so they can get what they want. Even though they're wrong. Even though they committed a crime. Because conflict of interest clearly shows it. That's conflict of interest. All day long. But everybody is quiet. They don't want to say nothing. Because see, if it had been my family member, I'd have been like, wait a minute. How do a DOJ rule on my daughter's case when one of the, the leaders are related to these people and that, that DOJ who made the decision is related to these people? Uh-uh. Do over. Go to the highest Supreme Court. But for some reason, it's quiet on her behalf. And there's only six months left before somebody can do something about a civil, a wrongful civil suit. I only have seven months left. And that's all we could do is wait on those seven months. Mm-hmm. 
but the Cabo Six are bullies. They are bullies. They are bullies. And Dejan A. Jackson is wanted by the Mexico police down there. So she can't go back to Mexico. And she loved to go to Mexico because before she deleted her social shoot, social media, we did see a lot of pictures with her and um, the rest of these traveling all across Mexico. But she won't be able to go no more. Not for the rest of her life because that want is going to stay out there for her in Mexico. So if she ever crossed that Mexico border, she's gone. She's gone. But I can tell y'all right now, the way they've done the Shankula case, they the uh they basically buried it, put it down. Um, you know, unbelievable. Still have seven months left, but what I can say is the way they deleted Shanquilla Robertson. All six of these and their protectors gonna have one hell of a Shanquilla karma curse on their back for life. They might not get justice, you know. They might, might not. You know, I would like to see Cabo Six under the jail, you know. Um, but we also got to be realistic as well, you know. Um, but one thing I can say, you can't fool the higher power. You cannot fool them. So what I can say is that they going to have a karma on them that's going to last them for generations to come. Generations to generations to generations Ooh, if they ain't already feeling it now. They went all out their way to prevent Shanquilla's justice. They went all out their way to block her civil rights to get justice. They put extra effort into stopping her justice. And so far she hasn't had it. But I can guarantee you her spirit is working on these six on that screen and their protectors. You talking about a calmer curse that's going to come to everybody involved in this. And everybody who acting like they don't give a damn. It's going to be unbelievable. The calmer. That comes back to everyone who's involved. Yeah, it will. It will. Not only to the six on that screen, but the people who protect them too. And the people who are acting like they really don't care nothing about Shanquilla. For real. Like she wasn't nothing. A very good business girl. She ran two businesses at a young age. Didn't have no kid. Making a lot of money. Had had it going on. Traveling the world. She was doing everything a parent asks a child to do. And she was doing it. And it seems like. Don't nobody give a damn but us supporters. Wow. I can tell you right now, it's given. They all having bad luck right about now. But I can tell you that karma will follow them for the rest of their life. That Shanquilla karma is added heavily on their back. And that's a fact. So, that's all I have to say about that. Um, we'll continue talking about baby girl. She has seven months left. And we hoping that we see something or hear something within them seven months. And if we don't, we most likely know that they, the family, her family most likely settled something outside of court. Because see, if it hits the court, it's going to have to be documented. 
I mean, you, you just you just can't. It, it ain't no ceiling. It, no, no, no. Uh, it, it would have to be. So most likely, if we don't, if the seven months pass and we don't hear anything after the seven months, then most likely we know they have been satisfied behind the scenes and they didn't need nobody. Uh, they didn't have to tell nobody and all that. They probably handled, settled some things on the outside of court. People do it all the time. Okay. But in the meantime, we'll wait and it's seven months remaining, and we will continue to count down those seven months and hope that we can hear or see something pertaining her justice because it is well overdue. That's all I have to say about that. Gain knowledge to prevent blockage. And we all know what that means. The more you know, the harder it is for anybody to block y'all from your goals and success. Bye-bye.